Hey guys, let's get straight to the point. Today, I'm gonna show you an app that I downloaded for my Sony a7 IV that works as a monitor for my camera using my iPhone or iPad or Android phones. This app is so good that it's just amazing. It's way better than a lot of my monitors that I use for my cameras. And the app is called Monitor Plus. So this is the icon, it's called Monitor Plus that you can download from the App Store. It's very easy to connect it to your Sony camera. I believe the a7 IV, R4, A1, and A7S III will work with this app. Once you're inside the app, just go into the Bluetooth settings of your uh, camera and then you just tap on pair after you paired it once and it will ask you to join the Wi-Fi network of your camera. Once it's connected, you'll see that the Wi-Fi sign on this side on the camera will light up and you are looking at what we're seeing on the Sony camera right now. There are two different versions of this app on the App Store. One is a free version and the other one I believe is $20 US or $27 or $26 Canadian. I paid for the pro version and I'll show you the major differences between two versions. The free version, it's very simple. Basically, you just have the uh, viewfinder and also remote control of the camera settings using the phone or your uh, iPad or Android devices. Without the paid version, basically everything at the bottom will be grayed out. The free version is actually not bad at all because it allows you to change all the settings of your camera, including frames per second. You can see it here. You can change the format of your recording and you can change your frame rate and the bit rate. Of course, shutter speed, the aperture, ISO, which is really handy, white balance, which is super cool because you can change the settings or the white balance setup that you can use uh, as a preset and also changing the color temperature by itself and adding tint and stuff. So that's amazing. And you can change the autofocus to manual focus mode. Here you can change the focus area. And if you tap onto the battery, it will not do anything because if you want to check the battery off your phone or your camera, you actually have to tap onto the menu button here and it will show you the battery like right here. It's super tiny. The camera 64%, phone is 89% right now. Let me turn off some of the features that is not supposed to be on for the free version. This is how it looks like for the free version. You have a histogram at the bottom left, which is still really, really handy because it allows you to see if your uh, image is actually overexposed or properly exposed. And you will see that this image right here is really faded after I turn off some of the features because it's not loading a LUT on top of what we have an s Lock 3 profile here. If I turn off the uh, gamma display assist. It's really close, but it's still not the same. But this is how it looks like on the camera. If you turn on gamma display assist, this is a Sony a7 IV. I always uh, film in s Lock 3 because of the uh, most dynamic range that you get from s Lock 3. So this is how it looks like on the free version. There's one more major difference uh, compared to the paid version is you will not see this focus box right here. If I move the focus box on the camera, you'll see that the focus box changes. And you can also tap on the screen to change a focus box location, but that it's only available for the pay or the pro version. This focus box is not going to show up if you have the free version. So keep that in mind. If you need the focus box, you have to pay for the pro version. But of course, you have a lot more stuff that you can use in the pro version and I'm going to talk about them right now. Before I do that, I will show you one really good uh, trick that you can use if you are into recording your camera display or the screen. On your iPhone, there is a screen recording function. If you tap onto this and start recording the screen, it will actually record this screen right here, which is pretty much exactly the same as your Sony camera screen with all the settings on it. So it allows you to demonstrate, uh, let's say a uh, photography or videography tutorial, having all the settings there and showing the focus box with the pro version. So that's one trick. I'm gonna record the screen and I'll probably jump back and forth between this uh, view and the screen of my iPhone and also the screen of the camera.
one function on the free version that allows you to uh, use it as a really nice wireless monitor is you can press the record button here and it will start recording on the camera as well, uh, as well even for the free version. So that is very, very, very handy. So this is not only for the pro version, but also for the free version as well. At the bottom of the screen, you have the memory card slots one and two. It will tell you how much time you have left if you are in video mode, which is amazing. I'm going to talk about the photo mode as well, because this app works for photo mode as well. At the bottom here, these are all the pro features right here. You can also see them inside the menu. If you have the free version, this is the only option that you have, which is using the volume key of your phone to start recording, which is still pretty handy. I would say if you are wearing gloves and stuff, then you should use that button to record if you want to remote the camera from a distance. Other stuff, everything is grayed out pretty much for the free version. Here you have camera control, of course, you have picture profile here. One thing I want to let you guys know is I think they have to update this app in order to show picture profile PP11, which is Cine, St uh, Cine Still. I think that's a, that's what it's called um, on the, oh, this is what happens if your phone is connected to this Wi-Fi because it's not picking up any cellular data or this Wi-Fi is not going to connect to the internet. So that's something you have to keep in mind. So just tap on use cellular data. On your camera, there's picture profile 11 for the um, Sony a7 IV. It has s -Cine tone, but here there's no s -Cine tone picture profile PP11. So that's one thing that is kind of weird that they didn't include. Maybe the camera is too new, but that's okay. So this is on picture profile 11, and I can't jump back to picture profile 8, which is s log 3 when it's on PP11, probably because it doesn't have it here. So that's something you can change. And here we have live view image quality. This allows you to set the um, pretty much the response time or the lag time between the camera and your phone. I would say if you're doing critical focus polling, then use the high quality. But for something that is fast and quick, you might want to set it so it doesn't have that much delay. But to be honest with you, I don't think the delay is that bad, even on high mode. So if I turn it to low quality image, I don't really see a huge difference. It's almost instant, which is amazing. Even with the free version, the speed is pretty much the same. So you don't have to worry about that. But for photo mode, probably because the camera knows that it's taking photo instead of streaming a video. So it will increase the latency and this will be kind of laggy, probably just to save battery life. But that's okay because we are usually in video mode for myself anyway. So let's talk about all the features at the bottom right here. The first feature is Zebra. So basically anything that is overexposed, if I set the ISO a little bit higher on this side right here, you'll see that we have Zebra on both devices display because this part of the image is overexposed. There's one quick tip that I want to tell you guys is that if you tap on to the feature that you want to use or adjust, you tap and hold, you will be brought to this page right here to adjust the level of that specific feature. On my camera or my Sony a7 IV, I have Zebra level set to 90%. And uh, on, on here, I have it's set to 92 in order to match it. So the Zebra, it's a little bit different, but you just need to play around with it to make sure that they look kind of the same. So I have 92 set on the Monitor Plus app and I have 90 set on the camera. So that's one quick tip from me. And if you tap on the screen again, you have other features. So that's Zebra, right? And this one right here, this is actually really, really cool. This is what we call false color. This is really handy when you are trying to determine what part of the image is overexposed, underexposed, or properly exposed. You can see a chart right here at the bottom. If anything on the screen that is purple, that means it's underexposed. So if I 
set the ISO to lower. Oh, it doesn't have any purple stuff, so everything is kind of exposed except this part. And I have blue, so this is pretty underexposed. But anything up here in red, it's going to mean that that part of the image is overexposed. This is pink. This is not red. So that's the confusing part. This is actually pink. So anything green, grayish means that part of the image is properly exposed. This is really, really good, especially if you are filming in S-Log or any log profile on your Sony camera. It's better to use false color or what I'm going to show you next, the waveform monitor to monitor the exposure instead of using this meter thing at the bottom. It's, it's not the most accurate thing to use, especially when someone says, um, or actually a lot of people say that, um, use this metering or meter to judge when you are filming in S-Log3. Just have it overexposed like 1.7 1, uh, 1 stop over the uh, normal exposure, then you will have a properly exposed image. But the problem with this metering is, is judging the entire scene. So everything inside the picture will be used to judge and come up with this number. So if you have something that is super, super extreme, uh, extremely bright, it will affect this number really significantly and it will just skew to that side. So I would highly recommend you guys to use waveform monitor or this false color chart in order to properly expose S log 3 or any log profile on your camera. Just get into the habit. This is a really, really professional tool to use. So just by having this false color on this app, it's more than enough for us to purchase the pro version for $26. That's like nothing compared to a professional monitor that has this, this kind of feature, which will cost you like what, like three, $400 at least. So that's false color. The next one is the guideline. So if you want to film in a cinema scope, this is a 2.35 by one, I believe. Again, if you tap and hold on to this option, you have 235 by one, and you can change your opacity and everything is available for you to change, to customize it. So you know that if you are planning to use CinemaScope, like a wider aspect ratio compared to what I'm, what we're seeing right now on the camera screen with two black bars at the top, uh, one black bar at the top, one black bar at the bottom, then this is for you. You can change the aspect ratio to anything else by tapping and holding and you can just switch it back to 16 by nine, but I always do two, three, five by one, just in case to have kind of like a safety zone when I'm filming. So that's that. And we have, of course, focus peaking. You see that it is now focusing on this Iron Man um, Hulk Buster right now. That's why it is highlighted in red. I usually use the color red for focus peaking because it's a little bit easier. It's not that common that the inner object is red, except this time I'm using the whole buster, which is red. And if you focus on something else, let's say I tap onto this area right here, you see that now that the lamp is in focus instead of the Hulk buster. And I set the focus peaking on this monitor to be a little bit more vibrant and highlighted. That's how, like, that will help me to judge the focus. And on the Sony a7 IV, a lot of people are actually like confused that when you are using autofocus, there's still uh, focus peaking. So this is in for autofocus mode, but it, the focus peaking is still on. You cannot really see it, but it's still on. I think it's really good because a lot of times, like, why not? Like you can still peek and make sure that that part of the image in, it's in focus instead of seeing nothing and trusting the autofocus blindly. So. I highly recommend keeping it on. So that's a good feature on the camera. But here you can change the intensity and the color of the focus peaking. You can turn it the image into grayscale to help you to actually see what's in focus. But I'm just gonna leave it as in color. Just gonna turn that off. The next one is really good. I always use this on my GH5 to judge exposure. Here we have a waveform monitor. What you see here is if anything that hits zero, I know it's really small to see, anything that hits zero, that means that part of the image is underexposed. And anything that goes above 
certain level depends on the profile that you are filming. I'm going to show you how to tell if something is overexposed using, let's say, S log three. So everything right now is within 100 and zero. So that means everything is pro not properly exposed, but everything is protected. The shadow is protected, the highlight is protected, so nothing, no information is overexposed and gone or underexposed and gone. So this is good. But there's one thing to keep in mind. One very, very easy way to judge if something is overexposed, especially if you are not familiar with your log profile that you are filming or whatever pro profile that you're filming with, watch this. I'm gonna increase the ISO on my camera. You see that the waveform monitor goes up. The whole thing goes up. And watch the top here, this point right here. If I keep increasing the ISO, it will not pass certain point and hit 100. It will never hit 100 because this is an IRE level and SDOC3, I believe by judging this exposure waveform monitor, I can tell that SDOC3, once it gets over 93-ish kind of IRE, it will just clip and not show you anything. So one very quick and easy way to make sure that some, like everything is protected, especially the highlight area is Keep increasing the ISO until you see that the peak of this chart is being like squished and compressed. So this is still okay, but now it's kind of being like squished. You can tell that if I lower it, it will show you more information. So this is about the right exposure for this particular scene. That's how I use the waveform. It's very, very handy. I would say it's probably even better than the false color that we just saw, but this is how I would use this waveform monitor to properly expose the scene. One thing I wish they can do, the app developer can try to do is allow us to move this waveform monitor. It's now like kind of stuck at this corner. So if I have something there, I can't really like see it behind the, the uh, monitor. But of course, you can adjust the opacity of this waveform monitor. It's still gonna be okay. You can change it to a bigger scale, which is the entire scene, or medium, which is kind of weird, but I always use just a small because it's just for me to estimate the exposure of the scene. So that's waveform monitor. This is the second reason that you guys should get this app, absolutely for sure, because it's only $26 Canadian or $20 US, and this is super, super handy. By the way, we are not sponsored by this app. I downloaded it, I purchased it, so. I pay for it. <laughs> the next feature is very, very handy, especially when you always film in a log profile. As I said, this is a really washed out image, as you can see. This is for you to apply a LUT. So once the LUT is applied, you can see that it's not exactly the same color, but it's more saturated and contrasty for you to judge any kind of like exposure or colors or contrast. Give, giving you a general idea. If you tap and hold on to this feature right here, you have the option to select different kind of LUT to be applied to this particular image right here. You have the ability to airdrop your own LUT onto your phone in order to apply it onto this monitor. But remember, it's not gonna apply to the final image. It's just for you to monitor it. So if you send a LUT over, it was just allows you to monitor the image using that LUT. Built in, it has SLOC2 and SLOC3 to Rec 709, which is perfect. So that's super, super handy. Remember to keep this on. The next feature is quite complicated for a lot of people, I would say. I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna use it that often, but it's still very, very handy. Here you have three different charts. You have the waveform monitor and RGB parade for exposure. And here it's for you to judge the color accuracy. So if you have, this is a vector scope right here. You can see that there's one line right there. That is for skin tone color. So if you want to see if your color temperature, let's say your white balance or a picture profile has accurate skin tone color, this is where you can see. So whatever that is on this line, that is skin tone. So if I put my hand in front of it, you can see that it's kind of affecting the 
information in the middle and it I can tell that my skin tone on this camera right now is a little bit too red so that's how I would use it I don't think I'll use everything all at once this is a little bit too busy the next feature here is called this D squeeze this is specifically for anamorphic lenses so let's say there's Siri anamorphic lenses on your Sony camera the Sony camera does not have the de-squeeze function so if you use those kind of lenses it would just like be like a squished kind of image it'll be too tall for you to actually like see what's in the frame but with this de-squeeze function you have the ability to stretch the image out let's say it's now in two times if I tap onto it it would just stretch it into the anamorphic aspect ratio so this is super super handy a lot of monitors don't even have that many options this has pretty much everything and you can custom in an aspect ratio which is kind of crazy I don't even know how they did that but this is if you are using anamorphic lenses other features I don't know what they're for to be honest with you because I don't use them um, so like I like for for onset use these are way more than enough like don't complicate yourself like I really don't know what this feature is for so don't worry too too much so the next feature is really handy if you are handing this phone or iPad or Android device to someone or the director to, to use it to monitor the scene and you don't want them to accidentally change anything on the uh, camera or remote control the camera by accident is by tapping onto this lock and you have a slider right here once you slide it down you will not be able to change anything you can see that it's flashing reminding you that this is now locked so you have to unlock it in order to control the camera again and the next one is for you to flip the image left to right up and down and you have portrait mode as well Oh no, not this is not portrait mode. Oh wait, this is portrait mode. It's just making all the menu item vertical, which is something that I don't think I would use. So you're flipping or rotating the screen completely. Okay, I'm just gonna keep flipping. Ah, uh, it's not going back. Okay, I'm pretty sure this is a bug. <laughs> it's not letting me flipping back to normal orientation I'm just going to rotate my phone and I don't want to exit the app because once I exit the app I have to reconnect again I hope you guys can still see so those are the features that the paid version or the pro version provide to you but as I said before with the free version you can still remote control the camera so it's still very very good here on the last box or the feature tab you have the ability to turn off anything that you don't use so you don't have like that many items at the bottom I'm gonna check something off later but for demonstration purposes I'm just gonna check them all so you guys can see all the features so with the LUT I will usually turn on zebra for sure and I'll turn on the safety zone guideline and I will turn on the waveform and focus speaking so this is my usual setup when I am on set here on the menu tab as I said before you have the ability to check the battery level of your devices and I still need to test it because I think it is draining the battery of the camera quite quickly compared to not having it connect to the app but I usually don't I don't think I would use this app the whole time when I'm on set because I usually just look at the back of my camera screen to to film and I will use this to just to judge the exposure mainly I'll just turn it on connect it set the exposure done turn it off and leave it here you have multiple options um, as I said the first one is available for the free version as well and you have the ability to change your histogram style to different colors and record live view feed this is really weird and it's not the app's fault I believe it's Sony's setup when you record something and you want to play it back on your phone it's not available so once this is in playback mode this will be cut off 
so there's no signal going into the app when you're playing back your footage, which it's not that great if you want to check your footage on your device. So one way to work around is to turn on record live view feeds. What happened is when you press record, this app is gonna record the screen without all the information, just the screen to record basically the same scene and you will see the playback inside the gallery of this app. So it's not the actual footage, but it's, it's better than nothing. But I hope that Sony will open the, uh, open, it, uh, open the feature up to allow any app to have a wireless playback feature as well. But anyway, it doesn't have it. Tab function, you can change it to something else. You can use camera touch or AF area. I would use AF area to change the AF area. Safety camera roll, this is for you, as I said, to save any pictures taken and any video recorded using the record live view feeds. So if you are in photo mode, this app will still work. Once you take a photo, this, if you have this on, it will record or take a photo and save it onto your phone's camera roll. And tap to force refocus in photo mode. I have never used this, so don't even worry about it. You don't really need it. And uh, this is for fouling the photos that is recorded. And signal type, you have full and you have limited. I don't know what that means, to be honest with you. I would use full because because of the latency, um, lack of latency, I should say, if you are in full signal and also if you are in the lower image quality mode. Flipping is the same thing, rotating the app, which couldn't go back to the original orientation. I think that's a bug. Portrait mode, again, make every, making everything vertical. And I don't think I'll use it that often. I really don't like filming in vertical or portrait mode. Picture profile, we uh, use that. T touch function, again, focus, tracking. Depends on the settings of your camera. You can have tracking available. Just tap onto an object and it will just start tracking that object. This one, we talked about it already, the image quality. Just set it to low if you want something fast and set it to high if you want to judge critical focus. And this is still image, save destination. I believe you can save the, yep, you can save the still image to your phone or to your camera. I don't use that. I always use the image on my SD card anyway. So this is just for the app. So don't worry about that. Uh, Monitor Plus Pro, you, I have already purchased it, so. Oh, by the way, this is not transferable onto, let's say if you have two devices, let's say you have a, an iPad, an iPhone, you have to buy two license. So that kind of is not too, too good. <laughs> so I would just keep the paid version on my phone because I would use all the exposure tools, but on the iPad, I'll just use the free version because they will allow like another person to look at the image or the director or the client. Status is just gonna show you the connection status of this app to your camera. Now let's try to record something. So I will have the guideline turned off because I want to film in 16 by nine, which is exactly the same as what my camera is looking at right now. So it is now recording um, Hulkbuster, I'm gonna turn the ISO down a little bit because I never want to overexpose something. I would rather underexpose it, to be honest with you. I know that's not the proper way to do s 3 but to me, protecting the highlight, it's way more important. So here, when you're recording, it will show you that it is recording and the timing uh, and the time of the, uh, the recording. And if I tap onto something else, it will change the focus. And the focus polling speed is of course, depend on the focus sensitivity and focus um, transition speed on your camera. So that's something that you cannot change on this app, but it's totally fine. It's absolutely fine. All right, now I'm just gonna quickly show you what happens if you switch your camera into photo mode because this app also works with photo mode. So when you are in photo mode, you'll notice that the LUT is still applied, so you should turn this off so it doesn't look that wacky. And here I have ISO set to auto. This is aperture priority mode, but it will still work with photo mode. That is super amazing. You'll see all 
the photos that you are available to take with the SD cards that you have in the camera, like how many photos you can take. And of course, it will change the aspect ratio to four by three. And all the features are still gonna work. Even waveform monitor is still gonna work. This is amazing, like false color, everything works. Before I was complaining that like some cameras, they only allowed you to use the waveform monitor in video mode, let's say the GH5. And now you have a waveform monitor when you're taking photo with the Sony cameras. That is absolutely amazing. So this is one thing that I really love about this app right here. That's it. That's pretty much everything you need to know about this amazing monitor plus app for your Sony cameras. Make sure that you check the list on the App Store description page that your camera is being supported. I believe A7 III is not supported. Unfortunately, I don't know why, but hopefully they'll work on it and make, make it available with working with this app. And of course, A7 IV, R4, A1, A7 S3 should be on the list, but definitely check it before you purchase it. But of course, you can test it with the free version anyway. So definitely try it out with the free version. And I think this is way, way, way worth it compared to buying an actual monitor that has all the features that I just showed you. Of course, an actual monitor would have a separate battery and it will use HDMI cable, so it's gonna be much more stable and quicker when it comes to signal, but it's still definitely good enough. Like you can tell by the other camera that I am recording the screen of, your, of my camera and also the phone, screen that the latency, it's not bad at all. Let us know what you think in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.